Oh, wrong book. Ah! What's going on, everyone? So, uh, the first of my program are currently studying to take their MCAT sometime in May. And I figured with this being that time where people are preparing their applications or preparing to study for their MCATs or studying for their MCATs, I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of like show how I realistically study for my MCAT. Um, now, I say realistically because I had to work two jobs while studying for my MCAT post undergrad, and I wasn't able to study for my MCAT during undergrad um, despite trying a lot. I remember like being on YouTube and looking for advice and seeing a lot of videos saying like, you know, how I scored in the 99th percentile after studying for only one day before the test. Um, and that's just not me. I am not that smart to go to score the 99th percentile. Um, that's just fact. That's not to say I sold myself short though. Like I know what goals are realistic for me. For example, like I really wanted a 506. I felt like that was going to work for the type of application that I had going in. Um, I ended up scoring a 510 after the exam, which was great because I thought I totally bombed it. So for me, a 510 was basically a 99,000th percentile. I was just super happy about that. So like with all that considered, I kind of wanted to make a brief video detailing my MCAT journey and how I went about it. Um, later on, I do want to show like uh, a video detailing my schedule and how I did it. And well, adding some tips with some of the skills I picked up taking medical school classes this year, because honestly, medical school, it's like every test is like taking the MCAT, but just not as scary. <laughs> so a quick catch up. I think I signed up for my exam like a total of five times. That's including moving exams. I really wanted to take it what people say on time the year before I graduated, like during my junior year, um, but that just wasn't possible. And like even thinking back, like there's no such thing as on time in my opinion. You take the test when you're ready. Um, but during this time, I signed up, canceled, moved, canceled, talked to professors. And after a while, I felt like I was definitely dead set on taking it in May of uh, 2016. But honestly, after studying for a month, I still wasn't ready. and. During that point in my life, I just really wanted to enjoy finishing undergrad because of all the like the struggles I had gone through and I just want to have fun. And after initially getting to graduate school back home, I canceled my exam and figured it wasn't the right time to do that, you know, to take the exam, which ended up being one of the best decisions I made in my life. So after that, I registered to take it in January of 2017. Um, decided to not do graduate school and ended up um, continuing to be a head coach while working as an emergency room scribe and studying for my MCAT um, during this time. So because of my work schedule, I had to be very diligent about my study routine. Um, I was a big believer in studying during the time frame that I would be taking the test. And I've always been a morning person. So waking up to study and be ready at 730 wasn't an issue for me. Um, Basically, on a typical study day, I would set my alarm, be out of bed by 6.30, you know, give myself an hour to warm up to the day, um, you know, drink coffee, talk to my parents, listen to music, watch stupid videos, dance in my room, whatever I needed to, um, to do to be ready and awake to study and hit the books hard. Uh, so for the first month and a half-ish, I really focused more on content reviews, um, so like just going through the books. I used the Kaplan books um, and I got those because my sister got me a self-study Kaplan course as a graduation gift, which is really awesome of her. And um, yeah, typically, you know, between the hours of 7.30 and 12, I was most productive. I was going through the chapters, taking notes, re reading, quizzing, trying to internalize it as best as I could. I would eat lunch from 12 to 12.30 and let's like, hang, in, hang out, text, watch a video and then continue going hard from 12.30 to about 1.45 to two. Um, after two o'clock, I would set an alarm for about uh, 10 to 20 minutes to take a quick nap. I don't wanna be out of my house by 2.30 on a typical day because I really wanted to go to the gym because that's what would make me feel sane. Then after the gym, I would coach swimming from 4.30 to 6.30 and depending on the day, I would then drive across town and work an overnight shift as an ER scribe, typically from 8 a.m., I'm oh, sorry, from 8 p.m. to 7 a.m. if I was lucky to leave at that time. So there was just a lot going on. <laughs> but, you know, looking at it, I was definitely very fortunate to have two jobs that were very student friendly and very flexible with uh, the stuff I was working on at the time. And I know some people are not as flexible and you might have families, you might have a really strict job. So one of my, you know, a big advice is take your study schedule, work it around your work schedule, and honestly, reach out to your bosses, reach out to the people you work with, and see, you know, try to get them to be understanding and kind of work with you during this hard 
and crucial time. So I kept this routine consistent throughout the process, really trying to do the bulk of my setting during the week. Um, on Saturdays, I would still study, but I would make sure to give myself that evening to hang out with friends, go out with friends, or just like give myself time um, for myself because I mean, I'm a person. During the content review phase, I would try to work on one subject one day and then switch it up every day after that. Um, trying to build up my efficiency where I can get to the point where I could uh, cover two topics in one day as best as I could. Um, and honestly, some days I went ham, like I really clocked in some hours some days, especially when days where I didn't have to scribe and didn't feel like going to the gym. But there were other days where like, honestly, if the most I could give was an hour, well, like one hour is better than zero hours, right? <laughs> and it was just really about like figuring out like what was working best for me and when I was dead, when I was tired and when I was hella motivated and just really bringing it home. After the content review phase, I started doing a lot of practice passages and practice problems, utilizing like the resources from Khan Academy and the Kaplan course. Um, I didn't use the videos from the Kaplan course because I didn't feel like I needed them, um, but that's just me. But whenever I was stuck on something, which happened a lot, I would always reference YouTube and sometimes the Kaplan videos, kind of just to get a little bit more of a background information. I still kept the same time frame as best as I could. But what I started doing differently during this time was every day I would wake up and at 7.30 when I started studying, I would start off with six to eight or eight to 10 cars passages from either Khan Academy or Kaplan. Um, to me, I feel like the best way to study cars was just by doing it every day, repetition, getting things wrong, reading things, and kind of building up that thought process about basically how the test wants you to answer these questions. After that, um, I would get the topics that I wanted to work on that day. I would do practice passages on that. Um, again, eight to 10, kind of simulating the whole section and then get a lot of questions wrong, make note of what I did, and then take the rest of the day setting those topics, honing in on the details, memorizing, quizzing, stuff like that, just making sure that, um, you know, I got, I put in the work on the stuff that I was getting wrong. So um, whenever I scheduled to take a practice, uh, practice exam, which was typically on Saturdays, I would take the day before and just review as much as I could, which was typically reviewing the stuff I felt weak on during that week or the stuff I really wanted to focus or improve on on that test. Um, I get a good night's sleep. My parents are really great because they would leave the whole day and leave me alone to just focus on the tests. And regardless of how I felt during it or how I did after, I was exhausted because it definitely, definitely sucks doing it. So I always like make sure to block off some fun time that evening to go out with friends and just really kind of like forget about that test and kind of recharge for the next day. Um, the following day, uh, typically Sundays, you know, I'd sleep in, take my time and I'd review my test for a few hours. All I wanted to take from that test was what are the topics I need to hit, you know, write down some little details or fun facts that I'd call them, and then use that practice test to mold my study schedule for the following week. So the following week after that test, just hit the topics that I felt weak on or hit some topics I want to go back to just to make sure that I'm, you know, there's, that there's constant repetition, that I'm seeing things consistently and that I'm learning from my mistakes, so to say. Um, concerning practice tests, uh, I got a 505 on the first one that I took sometime in September and I was like super, super happy about that because my goal was a 506. Um, and then after that, you know, averaging mainly 504s, some 505s, there was a 503 and a 502 in there. Um, my individual score, some would go up, some would go down and it was just really, really frustrating. But, um, you know, I just really tried to just focus in and just think it's gonna get better, it's gonna get better, it's gonna get better. Halfway through, I took the first AMC practice test, kind of, you know, because it is more realistic, kind of see where I was. I remember that being around a 504, 505, so, so not bad. Um, about a month out from my test, so a month before, that's where I started utilizing the AMC materials to like the question banks and stuff like that. Um, because at this point, it's like, I should have really gotten in the base knowledge and, you know, really want to utilize the most realistic material, which is the AMC stuff. So I wouldn't recommend starting off with that. You want to say that towards the end because that's when you're going to be able to really gauge where you're at and kind of really warm up towards the test. I took the final AMC practice test at the time. So there was two, uh, about two and a half weeks before my test. And I scored a 506 and I was really happy about that. Also because on some Reddit page that I found, it showed that um, typically, people score a few points higher on the real thing. So I was feeling pretty good. And um, yeah, I stopped studying seven days before my tests. I was just exhausted. I was tired and I did not want to study anymore. 
So I figured like, I know what I know at this point. I don't know what else I can do to kind of get better. So from that point on, all I did every single day still was cars in the morning, eight to 10 passages, trying to just keep that skill up, that thought process up, the speed up, and every day just passively reviewing notes on different topics, not really focusing 10 hours a day, just a few hours making sure I'm reviewing things and equations are stuck in there and stuff like that. And the day before, I just chilled. I didn't do anything. I tests didn't exist. I put all my notes away. I did not want to see them. Um, during the test, it sucked. I thought I was really bombing. Um, I thought everything was going bad, except psych Sosh. That was the only time during the test where I, where I felt like, all right, Javi, you're doing this. So this is, this is working out for you, bud, which is good because I felt like that was the hardest part to study for me. So then after the test, uh, I went to GameStop. I got the new Pokemon game. I got really drunk and then I signed up for a new test the next day because I thought I, I thought I totally bombed it. Um, a month later, scores came back. I am in my home alone. I log in and I'm like, holy hell, like, oh, so I got a 510 and I was so stoked, so ecstatic. Um, I sent my login to three of my friends because I was like, I, I, like, I don't believe what I'm seeing. I need you to tell me that what I'm looking at is true. And it was awesome. I dropped uh, 700 bucks on Lady Gaga tickets that day and I just felt so on top of the world. I ended up not getting accepted that year, which is fine because now I am, um, but I never had to retake that test, which is awesome. Um, I do want to note, uh, I never also opened the physics book. I never learned it at undergrad and I hated it. And um, so when I was studying for it, I was like, well, I'm going to rely on my chemistry and my biochem and a little bit of the ochem to kind of uh, work through that. And I mean, it worked out, I got lucky, but don't do that. Please study physics. It's part of it. You should definitely study for it. Don't do what I did because I got lucky and you never know if it's going to be physics heavy or not. <laughs> Y'all, I have done the first year medical school classes and as hard and as stressful as medical school is, nothing was scarier than taking that MCAT. Um, I'm a relatively relaxed person for sure, but I still took that test seriously and I still made a plan and focused on it. But the test isn't everything. You know, there are other parts to your application. There's the essays, there's the letter of recommendation, the activities, and if and, you when, if and when you get to it, there's the interview. You know, I knew that I had a really bad GPA going into this, which is why I took stock of the stuff that I could control, which included the MCAT. So that's why I really hit it hard. Um, if you're wondering, I ended up scoring a 126 on Chem Phys, 127 on Cars, 129 on the Biology Biochem, which I thought was my worst section when I was taking the test, and then a 128 on the um, Psych Soch. So y'all, like definitely study hard, uh, but also make time for yourself, you know, like make your goals, make your, you know, the, the stuff you want to achieve while you're studying, but if you don't reach them sometimes, don't beat yourself over it. Like some studying is better than no studying. And honestly, sometimes fuck studying, you know, like don't study, take a day off, play video games. If it's not what's scheduled, too fucking bad. Like, you know, you gotta relapse. It's a stressful time. It's a marathon. And when you, when you take those days off, definitely make, make up for it the next day, okay? But don't beat yourself over it, you know? Developing those self-care skills now is definitely gonna go a long way during medical school because it is stressful and you need to know you need to learn that studying while it's a big part of our lives it is not our lives we are human and there are other stuff that are important to us working out friends reading writing doing literally nothing is also important so make sure you take this time to try to find that balance so with that being said um you know like subscribe and share if y'all are liking these videos uh, i'm definitely gonna try to you know, as application season comes closer, kind of share a bit more of my advice and, you know, the practical approaches that I took during this. I've, I've applied twice, so picked up a few things along the way. And um, yeah, you know, uh, let me know in the comments what y'all think about this. Let me know if what else you'd like to see. I'm going to try to be a little bit more consistent. And as I've said a few times, I'm going to try to, you know, put out a video where I kind of walk into a little more detail uh, my study schedule and some of the tips I developed. But um, yeah, I uh, hope you all like this. I'll see you in the next one and uh, have a nice day. Bye-bye.